This here is the Scythe Mugen. That's how you actually say it. It's a Japanese word, okay? Bear with me. Mugen 5 Rev B. Why is Rev B important? AM4 support, a hugely popular platform as of late, so it makes sense to uh, add support for it. This is one of the most underrated coolers I think you can find, uh, and it's not just because it's coming from a company called Scythe. I mean, Scythe makes really good stuff. They make very unique air coolers, but they're not as popular in the US, so I wanted to make this video to not only bring it to your attention, but show you how good it is for the money. Stay with me. By this point, you've probably seen our original ad for Thermal Grizzly's Carbonaut Pads. They're clean, peace of mind replacements for traditional thermal paste, and best of all, you'll never have to replace them. But did you also know that you can buy Carbonaut Pads in different sizes for various processors? 32 by 32 millimeter for Intel desktop CPUs, 38 by 38 for Intel HDT and Ryzen, 25 by 25 for the RTX 2080 GPU, and so on. They even make a giant 51 by 68 millimeter pad for Threadripper. I highly recommend Carbonaut Pads, and you can learn more by clicking the link below. Let's go ahead and open the box, see what's inside. Bit of a different uh, format for this video. I don't know what you guys think about it in the comments below. So this is our install box. I'm sure all of our goodies are in there. This is one of our Scythe fans, a 120 mil fan here with some uh, gray accents, not bad. And then we come to the cooler. Go ahead and get rid of that. This is a beauty, folks. So you get that nice looking Scythe uh, logo there up top. You've got these beautiful uh, termination points for the heat pipes. There are, just in case you're wondering, six nickel plated, it looks like copper heat pipes, pretty beefy cold plate there. And it looks like the uh, mounting mechanism, at least part of it, is secured to the cold plate itself or the top of it. Uh, so installation shouldn't be too difficult. And uh, actually, if you wanna get up close there, Nate, you can see this is where you're gonna funnel uh, one of your uh, Phillips screwdrivers. I'm not sure if you get one in the box. I don't, I don't know if you do, but uh, you're gonna funnel it through this opening at the top and uh, that's how you're gonna secure one of the screws above the cold plate. The other one, as long as you don't have the fan installed, should be pretty easy to access. But I've gotta say, build quality in this thing, looking pretty sweet. Again, keep the price in mind, it's not too expensive. All right, so we can see what we get in our install box here, and I'm hoping that a screwdriver is included because, okay, well, that answers that. Oh, wow, this one's, this is pretty cute. So you're gonna get this, and again, like I was trying to explain earlier, this is gonna slide down through the fin stack, and you're gonna be able to secure this screw like so. So very nice that you get this also uh, included with the cooler, again, at this price. And it looks like the mounting gear is pretty standard. This doesn't look like anything out of the ordinary. I've installed uh, dozens of coolers by this point, and uh, I can pretty much get an idea for how complex this install is gonna be, uh, with the exception of tolerances, just based on, yeah, the stuff I'm seeing in here. Sorry, that was probably annoying. So what I want to do next is install the cooler. We're going to use a 10900K because I feel like going ham and figured if we're going to be testing this cooler for its thermal capacity and ability to dissipate heat. Uh, we might as well, uh, I don't know why I threw that on the ground. But anyway, this CPU gets plenty hot as I'm sure you're aware. So I figured it'd be a good candidate for some CPU cooler testing. Now, it doesn't really make sense, in my opinion, to pair such an expensive CPU with a cooler that's only gonna run you in the, you know, 50s or 40s. Like, you might as well go all out and spend 100 bucks on a 360 AIO or something similar to that in terms of heating potential. Uh, but I just wanna get the point across that this thing is actually effective for the price and still holds its own when compared to some of the more expensive offerings. Otherwise, why would you buy it? First thing we're doing is securing the back plate here. And you actually do that from the front. So you've got these little standoffs. This at least is uh, the install process for LGA 1150X. And I guess in this case, LGA 1200. Same uh, cooler installation process. The, the holes on the boards are the same. So don't worry about LGA 1200 support. Uh, as long as it fits LGA 1150X, it should fit 1200 as well. We got these standoffs in here. Now we're gonna get this bracket secured. This is pretty standard stuff in case you're wondering. And you get to use the included Phillips screwdriver for pretty much everything. All right, up next, I'm gonna use the Scythe stock thermal compound. Now I like to use the included paste whenever I'm testing a cooler's performance because this, if this is bad, will affect the cooler's performance overall, obviously. Uh, and this is a way for me to incentivize companies to include better thermal compounds so that their coolers overall perform better. That is the goal after all. So we're gonna use this stuff here. And uh, yep, that's looking 
pretty milky. Now, this should be fairly straightforward. Line this up. Oh yeah, like butter. Slide this on down from the top. It's funny how like pretty much every like tower cooler like this follows a similar install process. I mean, they all kind of utilize the same designs in a way to get these mounted atop the CPUs. So this fan actually bottoms out on the top of this uh, screw here. That's to secure the cooler to the, uh, to the bracket below it. So you can't lower this fan anymore. You could use a slimmer fan, but then you would, you know, you, you'd lose the effectiveness of the fan overall. You can't displace as much air because the fins are a bit smaller. They do use these wire frame little fan bracket, whatever you call them things, but I am not the f biggest fan of them because they frankly suck. So we're gonna lock it down on one side. It's not supposed to, I'm, I'm okay. I'm doing this a little backwards, but I'm just trying to prove a point here. I do not like these wire designs. I love how we've just like completely neglected the primary camera. We're, we're, we're going AWOL at this point. All right, she's installed. I mean, look, it's not terrible. It's just a few, uh, this also popped out. Just a, a few extra seconds worth of install and frustration. But at the end of the day, the fan is very secure. And we do have these rubber vib vibration mounts, which is nice, again, in a cooler uh, in this uh, price range. Last thing to do then, connect the fan cable to its respectable header. And that's actually the optional header. I'm just gonna be picky for the sake of being picky. There we go. That's CPU fan header number one. And we're ready to start testing. Now, I know some of you, you know, you get your panties in the water when we do these cooler tests externally, as in not inside of a case. So we're gonna throw this, essentially a full build, together, and uh, we're gonna run some long-term CPU thermal tests, maybe Prime 95 and some quick bursts in games and see how she holds up. So we have been running tests with the Mugen 5, as well as a few other coolers. You're gonna see those in our graphs here in a second. Uh, wanted to just review the install process fairly quickly. It shouldn't uh, take you longer than, I would say a few minutes to get this installed, at least on an Intel board. Uh, and I know that the install process for the AMD chips looks very similar to other towers of this form factor. So uh, nothing unorthodox. You shouldn't run into any hiccups when installing. Uh, I did make the mistake of not removing the plastic underneath the cold plates. First time in my life I've done something like that. I know. So I was basically pegging T-junction immediately after starting Rite 64 benchmarks and the CPU was throttling by 20-30%. Uh, that was stock. And I was like, there's no way this cooler is that bad. So I ended up undervolting and underclocking the CPU to 4 gigahertz and 1.2 V-core uh, and uh, still throttled. Ended up realizing my mistake, uh, but I decided to leave the 10900K at four gigahertz, all core, all 10 cores, and then a 1.2 V core. It didn't really matter where we ended up as long as we were consistent between runs when we were testing different air coolers. So how does the Mugen 5 Rev B stack up to the competition? So as I said before, I did 64 engineer was used 30 minute sessions a piece. We used normal fan curves for the entire system, including the stock fans that came with the case. That's two fans up front and one fan at the rear. These are 140s, uh, pure wing two fans that come with the uh, 500 DX from Be Quiet. I tested the Hyper 212 Black Edition, which was kind of our control. I don't want to, I use that word loosely because it's not really a control, seeing as though we weren't using the stock cooler. There is no stock cooler included with the 10 under K. Uh, but the, the Hyper 212, for, in, for all intents and purposes, is kind of like a, a staple. So it's something you can benchmark against because it's so good for the price. Uh, and then of course the, the Mugen 5 was next. Then we had the Dark Rock 4 from Be Quiet, which is uh, usually a bit more expensive than the Mugen 5. And then the NHU-12A, which comes in at about hundred bucks. It's a very compact tower, uh, more compact than this actually, but it has, I believe, seven nickel plated copper heat pipes. It's a freaking beast. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a fairly quiet fan as well. So premium product there, one of the best cooling air towers on the market, uh, just to kind of see what a best case scenario would look like. 
and the Mugen 5 actually did better than I expected. Hyper 212 Evo came in at 71 degrees Celsius for the hottest core and uh, 39 degrees Celsius at idle. The idle temps are kind of wishy-washy. This will more or less tell you uh, how quiet the cooler is at idle. I don't really want you to pay attention to the temperatures themselves because the fans ramp down to different RPMs. They're all different. Uh, the Mugen 5 came in at the same 71 degrees Celsius. You're wondering, okay, well you said this is a better cooler. How are you surprised if it's doing as well as a Hyper 212 that costs less? You'll see here in a second. I think you know where I'm going with this. The Dark Arc 4 came in at 68 degrees Celsius. That's a three degree drop from the Mugen 5. And then the NHU-12A dropped another two degrees Celsius. So the NHU-12A is definitely the best cooler here. Onto the sound test. The Hyper 212 Black Edition was fairly loud in our testing. 43.2 decibels under full load, uh, 37.2 at idle, uh, which was just a tad higher than the uh, remaining coolers. Probably again, having to do with the fan uh, not being able to ramp down as low uh, as the other other coolers here. The NHU-12A came in actually second to loudest among the four coolers at 41.3 decibels, which is a bit strange for an octo cooler to do, although you need to keep in mind 41.3 uh, given ambient at 35.2 roughly uh, is not a significant bump. Uh, so it, it's still a very quiet cooler, but the two quietest coolers in my testing were the Dark Rock 4 and believe it or not, the Mugen 5. Both came in at around 40.1 dB a pop, 35.2 at idle. I'm super shocked by how quiet this cooler is under load. In fact, this entire time I've been filming with this system under full load in Ida64 Engineer. I shouldn't say full load, it's not, the graphics card's not being stressed, but the CPU is. Now, the side panel's off, so I'm giving it a bit of an advantage here, but this is super quiet. I'm, I'm not even sure if you're gonna be able to hear it uh, from my lav mic. Uh, it, it's just, it's an astounding cooler for the price, and what Scythe has essentially done is sacrificed a bit of the cooling potential uh, with this cooler uh, for the sake of keeping a quiet overall profile. Uh, quieter even, in my testing at least, uh, than the NHU-12A, which is pretty shocking because that cooler is a hundred bucks. Granted, the NHU-12A is by far the best cooling cooler here. I'm fibbing my words, but I think you get the idea. The, the Scythe cooler at around 40 to 50 bucks is gonna be a heck of a deal if you're interested in uh, a cooler that I think looks really good uh, and that also stays fairly quiet. It might not be the best cooler in the sense that it can't keep temps as low as you might like, uh, but it certainly holds its own, at least in this case here with a four gigahertz all core, which is again, we're under volting, under clocking, uh, but when compared to the NHU-12A, it's really not doing that bad. So let's talk about what Scythe did in a nutshell. They managed to keep a profile like this, which I don't think is very ostentatious, plenty of RAM clearance, actually not an issue at all with RAM. You could populate all four slots in this board and not have an issue at all. Uh, and they've also managed to keep the, the sound profile fairly low uh, at the expense somewhat at least of core temperatures. And I don't think that's a bad thing because the Hyper 212 did it really well. I'm talking what, 71 degrees Celsius under full load. Granted, we did undervolt and underclock, but again, I'm worried more or less about consistency here and, and not whether or not it can cool a 10900K. If you're gonna spend 500 plus dollars on a CPU, I don't think it makes much sense to spend only 40 or 50 bucks on an air cooler. Uh, might want something a bit beefier to handle a chip like this. At around 70, well, yeah, 71 degrees Celsius. That's actually exactly what we had in our charts. And this has been going for another 45 minutes or so. So the temperatures have definitely leveled out. Air coolers typically do, they saturate fairly fast. Unlike AIOs, uh, whose liquids inside of those take a bit longer to uh, equalize with the thermal output of the CPU. So I think for 40 or 50 bucks, this is a heck of a CPU cooler. Definitely not the best performer from a temperature perspective, but I don't think anyone's buying this because they know it's like a serious air cooler contender in the sense that it keeps temps low. That, that's not what I think Scythe is, is targeting here. I think they want to have a low profile, uh, quiet cooler uh, for the price. And this is, at least in my testing, the quietest one yet. Uh, so fairly impressed there for the price. You can find a link below along with the other air coolers we've tested here. If you want to know what we use to build this system here, I'll link a few other parts, including the case and the graphics card. But um, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with this one, and I really think that the, the Mugen 5, Mugen 5, you know, I said Mugen, the Mugen 5 Rev B uh, is one worth considering. This would work especially well with the lower TDP AMD chips. I think that goes without saying uh, those chips are extremely efficient, uh, and something like this would be plenty uh, thermal capacity for those chips, as well as um, super quiet, which 
I've said multiple times by now. So if I haven't emphasized it enough yet, the Mugen 5 Rev B, uh, an incredibly quiet cooler, especially for the price. If you guys like this one, click that uh, like button, consider subscribing, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me. I'm just screwing with Nate. He's going to have so much trouble doing all these cuts. Or maybe you guys are going to have trouble viewing all of these cuts. I guess I'm not really hurting you as much as I am the viewers. I'm sorry. I apologize.